In August of 1999, the David L. Moss Criminal Justice Center opened its doors for the first time. Situated in downtown Tulsa on a 23-acre lot, Oklahoma's largest direct supervision jail holds 1,714 minimum, medium, and maximum security inmates. Its occupants all accused of or convicted of crimes in Tulsa County. When a suspect is brought in, they enter through a secure door into a law enforcement vehicle parking garage, and there, they are taken into pre-booking. It is at this time the arresting officer completes the necessary paperwork and the suspects wait their turn for a thorough search by jail staff. Oh, okay. All right, let me see you. Let me see you right in the thing. All right, so I'm gonna have to walk to this metal detector and have a seat on this front row right there. What's your date of birth? Did you do a Lego sign your All right, come on up here, put your back against that gray board. Get a couple of photos of you. Once an inmate of the Tulsa County Jail, they are led into booking. It is here the rules of the facility are explained, and new inmates wait to be interviewed by a classifications officer, who will decide where they will be housed for the remainder of their stay. Have you ever been previously incarcerated? No. Do you have any family members that have this facility? No. Their placement could be in any one of the 21 separate housing units, 17 of which are open common day room pods, four are segregation pods, and all are specifically designed to accommodate either minimum, medium, or maximum security inmates. Mr. Johnson, go ahead and come up for me, please. This right here is a change of clothes. I'm gonna need you to put these on, give me all your articles of clothing that you're currently wearing, turn them into me. They're given two sets of orange clothes and asked to place their personal effects into a bag that is then inventoried and held until the inmate is released. In the event of a simple court proceeding, the jail is equipped with a video courtroom, allowing them to see the judge through the, a closed circuit TV. This process saves time and money in the transportation of inmates to and from court. There are no bars anywhere in the facility, and there are 11,540 square feet of skylights running through the entire building. The natural lighting brings a sense of openness to the hallways and housing units of the jail, aiding the inmates feeling. Research shows inmates being housed in a direct supervision jail to have better behavior as a result. In the 19th and 20th century, jail facilities were designed using a linear surveillance design. This style left officers with the inability to see into more than one or two cells at a time, leaving unwanted cracks in the surveillance. 
In the 1960s, jail design turned to the remote surveillance Podular's design, placing staff inside a secure control room from which they could observe inmate activity. While providing a safe vantage point for officers to observe a large area, this design left them unable to physically respond to any rising problems or detect them before they occurred. Direct supervision is a more modern method of inmate management. While the old methods focus on keeping the staff and inmates separate, direct supervision actually ensures that they have continued direct contact. An officer is placed inside each housing unit with the inmates. In general population units, they have no physical barrier between them. The officers have frequent non-scheduled observation of the inmates. And because of the personal interaction direct supervision affords, the officers get a much better understanding of what is going on in the lives of inmates in their area. With this foresight, officers are often able to detect problems as they emerge and allows them to decide on a course of action to take, should it become necessary, and whether the jail investigation unit should become involved. When you have 1,800 people all in one place, there is going to be some crime, and it's the jail investigation unit's job to look into every crime that occurs within the walls of David L. Moss Criminal Justice Center. Staffed by Tulsa County deputies and detention officers, this group often works with other agencies outside of David L. Moss. The jail investigation unit frequently enlists the help of the officers who work in the jail's mailroom. This involves the inspection of more than 160,000 letters a year. The letters inmates receive aren't always enough. These are human beings, and as open as the facility is, they do crave contact with those outside. This is possible through civilian visitation. The David L. Moss Criminal Justice Center provides 86 non-contact rooms and 20 contact visiting areas. The next area of the jail is the kitchen. This area is operated 24 hours a day and is actually staffed by the inmates themselves. These trustees are inmates that are being held for low risk, non-violent crimes. The inmates are monitored by Tulsa County Jail security staff and outside food preparation contractors. The kitchen is responsible for serving 5,100 full meals each day. The kitchen has to take into consideration all the special needs of the jail. Religious meals, medical cases, allergies, and any other special needs that may arise. Accredited by the National Commission on Correctional Health Care, David L. Moss Medical Unit is equipped to handle any illness or injury an inmate might have. With on-staff doctors and medical professionals, including those in the field of mental health, the David L. Moss Criminal Justice Center goes above and beyond the national average of medical treatment of inmates. The jail provides 18 different programs for the inmates, and through the jail chaplain program, almost 400 volunteers make Bible study and worship services available to the inmates. With the Into Work program, along with the GED classes, inmates at David L. Moss are able to continue their education and have help in finding work once released. These programs show Tulsa County's endless commitment to ensure the citizens do not continue to be released only to come back at a later date. After completing their sentence receiving a release from a judge or bonding out on their current charges, the inmate is called to begin the release process. Here's your release form. Make sure you have everything that they should do, including your cup and sport if you need your ID. Just take that down to operations when you go. You here for release? Yes, sir. Do you have your ID card? Yes, sir. I'll take your clothes. Sir, I need you to go out this door, take a left, go down to the release line, and have a seat. The inmate is taken to the property room and given their civilian clothing. Once back in civilian clothing, the inmate is taken to the release line. All right, would you go and stand and face that door? and just stand there till you hear the buzzer, and then you can push and go out. After all paperwork is checked, rechecked, and all loose ends are tied, the inmate signs their paperwork and is released from the facility. The Tulsa County Sheriff's Office is dedicated to holding its jail, the David L. Moss Criminal Justice Center, to the highest level of excellence, earning a National Sheriff's Association Triple Crown Award, an award that fewer than 40 sheriff's offices across the nation have received. Because of the vision of the office and the tenacity and commitment of its employees, the David L. Moss Criminal Justice Center has grown to become a leading force in the way these facilities are run across the nation.